how useful is measuring GH really? That's what I want to answer in this video and with the experiment that I've done behind me. Before we get into that though, we have to talk about why we are even testing that. I mean, GH is a staple measurement for shrimp keeping. It's been around for a very long time. According to basically every guide on the internet, GH is absolutely critical to shrimp keeping. Having your GH in the right range is incredibly important to ensure that they molt properly. Why is it then that so many hobbyists still have molting issues even when their GH is in that range? That's what this video is about today. It's all about understanding more about GH and why having your GH in the right range doesn't necessarily mean you aren't going to have molting problems. It's really frustrating when you are, when you think you have all of your parameters right, everything seems right on the tests, and yet you're still having shrimp dying from the white ring of death. Why the heck is that? That's what this video is going to explain. That's part of what these tanks behind me are going to do, because one tank is at 30 degrees hardness right here, while the other tank is at two to three degrees hardness. If you don't already know, these are way outside of the normal GH ranges for Neocaridina, especially what's recommended. And so if our shrimp actually do well in these conditions, what does that mean? And we're going to learn more about that by explaining the simple experiment behind me. If at any point in this video, you do have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section below or give us an email. We love interacting with any other hobbyist who has the same interests as us, because I mean, why wouldn't we? So please don't hesitate to ask questions, start a conversation. That's what this is all about, so we can all learn together. I do also really quickly want to apologize. This video quality and the sound quality is not quite up to the standard that we'd like, uh, but unfortunately, this experiment has to be taken down tomorrow. I'm just recording on my phone, and so I really appreciate your patience here. Uh, we will be back to regularly scheduled quality uh, in future videos. With that, let's go ahead and get into the experiment. So I had two questions that I wanted to try to test with this experiment. One is how true are the actual like GH ranges that we see online for Neocaridina? Yes, there are recommended ranges, uh, but how do they do when they are pushed outside of these ranges? The second question I wanted to answer here was how important is it to match breeders' parameters? We often see things online of people saying like, oh, I, you got to match the parameters of the breeder. That's why your shrimp aren't doing well in your tank. And I don't know if I believe that. I have had shrimp that I've moved from quite a few different parameters. Again, Neocaridina, and they've done well. They've thrived, and they've been happy and healthy. So again, I wanted to test these two questions about how important GH range actually is and whether you need to match breeders' parameters. I figure I could do that with a really simple setup like what we have behind me. And so I decided to test that by using these two tanks right here on either side. So one of them is extremely high GH and one of them is extremely low GH. And in order in order to be like semi-scientific here at least, I filled both of these tanks with the same amount of water initially. They have the same exact weight of substrates, in this case EcoComplete. They also have the exact same sponge filter. And then I put exactly 10 shrimp in each. The big difference between these two tanks is of course the GH level. And so this one is 30 plus GH. That's all from adding salty shrimp GH plus. I did it because that ensures that we have the right ratios of minerals. So we have healthy calcium to magnesium ratios along with the potassium and other uh, various micronutrients that are in there. The same thing was done for this tank uh, where I got it to about two to three DGH. The point is that these tanks are well outside of the GH range that we would expect to keep Neocaridina in, and so I was really curious to see how they do. Obviously here, if I saw that all of the shrimp started dying, if I had like two to three losses uh, in a matter of a few days or weeks, then I would have just stopped the experiment. Would have been a good indicator that these conditions are not good for them. They're not healthy. The way this tests the second question of how closely do you need to match the breeder's parameters is because these shrimp were originally kept in this middle tank here. And that middle tank was at about seven to eight degrees hardness, uh, about two to three KH. Uh, it was just a very neutral standard tank, eco-complete, has some algae in it. Again, it doesn't look the healthiest, but it, it works. The shrimp are breeding perfectly happy and healthy. So then I moved 10 shrimp from this middle tank to here. So they went from seven degrees hardness to 30 degrees hardness. And then another group of 10 went into this tank, and so they went from seven degrees hardness to two degrees hardness. And you would expect that if you did need to match breeders' parameters, 
that these would be enormous jumps that the shrimp simply couldn't handle. Because now the shrimp have been in there for about three months at this point at that hardness level, and they're doing well. They have bred. The babies are also surviving, so I wanted to keep them in long enough to actually verify that the babies would be able to molt and thrive in the tanks, and they're doing that. So what does this tell us? What can we infer from what we're seeing in these tanks? Obviously, a good scientific experiment would have like three to 20 replicates of each of these tanks going and to be really closely monitoring the shrimp. I mean, it's not perfectly controlled, and so that's a bit of an issue. But these parameters are so far outside of the like healthy range of Neocaridina that you would have expected something to happen if something was going to happen. I mean, there's not much that you could do for an environment if it just doesn't provide the right minerals. So they're not getting any extra really nutrients from anywhere. They were barely fed at all, frankly, because there's so much algae in this tank that I knew they'd be just fine. What these results seem to suggest is that GH matters a lot less than we think it does. Or at least the way that we measure it matters a lot less than having the right ratio of minerals. If we have the right ratio of calcium to magnesium, uh, like, which is best achieved by using a shrimp-specific remineralizer like the salty shrimp brands, then that is what's most important. The, the shrimp need to have the right ratio of calcium and magnesium to have the right flexibility in their shell to molt. If I were instead to have put crushed coral in this tank to bring it up to 30 GH, then we might have had different success levels because crushed coral varies in how much calcium to magnesium it has depending on the time period that it was formed. In some parts of our history, our ocean was much more magnesium heavy and in other parts it was more calcium heavy. And so the ratios can vary significantly for crushed coral. That's part of the reason why we would not recommend crushed coral actually for molting problems. We just don't know what's being added to the tank and whether it may actually make the problem worse. If for example, you already had an excess of calcium in your tank and now you're adding crushed coral, that also is only calcium. Again, that ratio of calcium to magnesium is incredibly important. If you saw our in-depth video on GH, what we found was that salty shrimp, at least, tends to keep their calcium magnesium ratio at about two to one. Another common remineralizer we've seen that isn't shrimp specific, but hobbyists have used and had success with, is Seachem Equilibrium. If I remember correctly, is about 3.5 four parts calcium to one part magnesium. And so that suggests that that range is reasonably healthy. There are potentially some other micronutrients that need to be thrown in in the right ratios as well, like potassium, manganese, or iron. But the calcium to magnesium ratio is likely the most important for proper shell formation at least. If you haven't already seen the in-depth GH video, I highly recommend going to check that out after this, as it explains the calcium to magnesium ratio more and how it actually affects shell formation, how we can actually go about measuring the calcium to magnesium ratio in our tank and then adjusting it. Let's discuss a couple of issues with this experiment. Again, one of them is just being the number of replicates that we had. The fact that there's only one replicate of each experimental group would be an issue in most experiments, and it certainly would have been an issue if we had seen shrimp dying. Because if shrimp had started dying, we wouldn't necessarily know, okay, is it because the tank isn't set up properly, it just didn't have the right microbiome, is, uh, like, is this getting more heat, like, variation than the other? If there had been a bunch of shrimp that started dying, we, we definitely couldn't have proven that it was conclusively caused by the hardness in the tank. The fact that my last count of this tank only had nine shrimp means I could have missed one, uh, and I'm going to pull out the shrimp later to check and verify that. The fact that they all survived means that these are survivable conditions. They completed their life cycle and there are now quite a few babies in these tanks. We can prove that they can survive these conditions and so just one tank of each is enough to prove that. Some takeaways for the average hobbyist then become the fact that testing for GH in say tap water is useful. It can provide some information of how many minerals are in there, but even if the GH is in the right range, it's not necessarily going to guarantee that you have the right ratio of minerals. And, and that's that's part of where things can frustrate hobbyists because they just maybe they see molten problems, ah, but I have the right GH, why can't I, why doesn't this work? I, I get it, I get it, that's very frustrating. 
this is part of why that's happening. The ratios of minerals in your tap water, they're affected by all of the geology around their, where your groundwater is or well, well water, wherever your water is coming from. The mineral ratio is being affected by uh, all of the rocks that the water is coming in contact with, and then that's providing a different calcium or magnesium ratio. The GH test won't work for testing this really. It'll give you an idea of if it's in the right range and you can try shrimp in it. And if you have molting problems, then it's time to go and get a calcium test. From there, with a calcium test, you can go ahead and calculate the calcium to magnesium ratio using the calculator on our website. And then our website also provides information on how to dose calcium or magnesium in your tank to get it into more healthy ranges. So we've tried to do most of the math for you and make this as easy as possible if you do want to use tap water. The other option, instead of buying the test kit, measuring, then buying the calcium or magnesium supplements, is to add a remineralizer. So even if your GH is relatively high, you can add a remineralizer. We've seen that shrimp can do well in a high GH environment without issues if the mineral ratio is correct. And so adding a remineralizer is guaranteeing that you're going to push the balance closer to that healthy range. Even if you had like all calcium, this is going to still add calcium, but it'll also add magnesium. It maybe wouldn't be as good as like taking the time to measure the calcium, find the ratio, and then order the right supplementation but it's a quick and easy way to definitely improve the mineral ratios in your tank. The best option though, is of course to use a remineralizer with RODI water. For those who aren't familiar, RODI water is just very purified water. So it has all of the minerals, nutrients stripped from it. And then we just simply add them back in. So we add exactly the right ratio of minerals at exactly the quantity that we want in our tanks. And so it gives us complete control over that. It is a bit cost prohibitive for some people uh, or time intensive to say, buy an RODI system or get RODI water and lug it back from the fish store or from your grocery store. But that may be the best option if you want to keep shrimp. So hopefully you found this useful, helpful. Again, I know it's not perfect. It's not like incredibly scientific. This was just a quick setup that I wanted to try and see if it worked. After that, all these tanks are going to be moved and replaced with a shrimp rack here on the wall. It's going to be holding quite a few more tanks for experiments in the future because I have a lot of ideas, a lot of things I want to test here, and I just need to have the time and resources to do it. Hopefully you learned something new today by watching this video. Shrimply Explained is all about actually testing hypotheses or looking for research to back up statements as opposed to just providing anecdotal evidence. So. That's our goal here. We are with the shrimp rack. I am going to be trying to set up more actual experiments with replicates and do some semi-professional testing, but that is going to take time and resources. So we'll see how that goes. If you do have any questions, comments, feedback, please leave those in the comment section below. I try to respond to every single one of them. Uh, if you want to send me an email, you're also more than welcome to at contact at shrimplyexplained.com. For more useful guides, scientific-based resource, you can check out Shrimply Explained on YouTube or visit shrimplyexplained.com where we have a whole like shrimp basics course on the website. We also have a PDF available explaining how to set up a really low maintenance neocaridina tank and just care for them. Uh, it also just provides all the basic information you need to get started with your shrimp tank and get it set up. I think you'll find that shrimp are just fascinating and you maybe want to try to learn more about them, whether that's for breeding purposes or just like you enjoy science. And if so, that's where the rest of the Shrimply Explained resources come in. Thank you so much for watching and happy shrimping.